Major support for Carolina Business Review provided by Grant Thornton. Operating in more than 100 countries, our tax, audit, and advisory professionals specialize in helping companies unlock their growth potential. The South Carolina Ports Authority, a major economic driver in South Carolina, supporting 187,000 jobs and nearly $53 billion in annual economic activity. And Sonoco, a global manufacturer of consumer and industrial packaging products and provider of packaging services with more than 300 operations in 35 countries. It is easy to see why the business and cultural activity and successes in our urban centers, our big cities are so plentiful and robust. Big populations mean a lot of attention. But if we're using that size equals success comparison, then what about the more rural communities and the small towns that have been just as relatively successful in spite of their size? This is Carolina Business Review, the most widely watched source of Carolina business policy and public affairs. We are calling this dialogue Small Town Strong in an attempt to tease out what and why these tinier towns are having just as much good fortune. In a moment, we welcome the mayors of Elkin, Georgetown, Roxboro, and the city manager from Hartsville. Stay with us. Gratefully acknowledging support by Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Visit us at SouthCarolinaBlues.com. The Duke Endowment, a private foundation enriching communities in the Carolinas through higher education, health care, rural churches, and children's services. Bearings, a leading global asset management firm dedicated to meeting the evolving investment and capital needs of its clients. Learn more at bearings.com. On this edition of Carolina Business Review, Brendan Barber, mayor of the city of Georgetown, South Carolina. Sam Bishop, mayor of the town of Elkin, North Carolina. Natalie Ziegler, city manager of Hartsville, South Carolina. And Marilyn Newell, mayor of the city of Roxboro, North Carolina. Welcome to our program, mayors. Madam City Manager, welcome to the program. This is very, this is very exciting because you all, and I know that you would, you would believe this because you're mayors, but you all are in unique towns that have been successful, are vibrant, have taken advantage of your geographic and the cultural resources available to you. Uh, Mayor Newell, I'm going to start with you first. So, Roxboro, north of Durham, almost in Virginia. Right. Um, you know, let's start with a broad question around this idea of urban-rural divide. We've all talked about that. We've heard about it. We, you know, big cities talk about it. But what's the point of view from a smaller town? What is this all about for you? Well, first of all, our urban partners are our neighbors. We are aligned in many ways through transportation divisions, community college connections, mm -hmm. certainly conduits to the universities. So we look to we look to them for resources. We, we don't really look at them as an adversary or competitor. It's really a matter of helping form our identity, but using some of those resources that are available to us. Mm -hmm. Mayor Bishop, same question. It's a, when, when you change directions as we did, to going from a manufacturing base to more of a tourism oriented base, then you're, you're reliant on the people from the larger cities to come and visit for the weekend. Mm -hmm and to spend money. Right. It helps your economic engine. Uh, Mayor Barber, this idea that Georgetown, and I want to ask you the same question, rural sure. urban divide. Here you are almost smack dab between, not quite, but smack dab between the low country and the top of the Grand Strand. Do you identify with the Grand Strand, which is basically tourism, or do you identify with the low country that is tourism, but also something else? What what is the urban-rural divide look like in Georgia? Well, we don't look at it like that. We look at it as being part of the Low Country or the Grand Strand, and Mayor Bethune in Myrtle Beach, and also Mayor Te Tecklenburg in Charleston. We've all formed relationships because we realize that the existence of the Low Country and the Grand Strand depends on partnering. So we have resources that, that we share. We can uh, bounce ideas off one another, look mm -hmm. forward to how we can form a stronger economic base within our area. City manager of Hartsville, is an urban-rural divide, how would you describe it? I don't think it exists in Hartsville. <laughs> I really don't. Um, we have a small community college, or not community college, it's- Coker a, College. Coker College yeah. University, it's fantastic. And we also have a premier governor's school for science and math. So we have a lot of PhD people living in Hartsville. 
And then Sunoco is bringing in these corporate executives with, with you know, education and background in larger cities. I think we have kind of a hipster vibe going in Hartsville, as I would describe it. You're not going to find another town with 7,800 people with a rooftop bar, a great bourbon bar downtown, all these really cool attractions that we've been able to get because of the people that we have coming into Hartsville. So, you know, this is interesting. Not one of you has, has really called out that there is a urban rural divide. Well, I think the only, the, the one thing that I guess that distinguishes Roxborough and Person County is we are the only municipality in, in Person, Person County. County. So we are, of course, very closely aligned with our county government entities, governing bodies, and I guess perhaps the effects of agriculture in our local economy is still a big factor. It's about $90 million a year into our mm -hmm. local economy. So while the urban areas may not have the agricultural resources that we have in Person County, we still all have to eat. We still have to grow food. I guess and I, that's important. I, I'm sorry, Mayor. I guess what I'm trying to understand, and anyone to answer this, so when we talk about, I, wanna, I don't want to keep beating this as, <laughs> as a dead horse, but this urban-rural divide, is it, uh, is it real, Mayor? It, it, I don't think it's real because as a city, you have to take on your own identity. You have to create ownership within the citizens there and, and the talent that you have within your, your community. So for instance, in Georgetown, we, un we understand that um, we're creating a TIF district, which is going to tax provide incentive financing. tax incentive. Yeah. And that's going to create economic development. We have a port, a historical port, so we've partnered with uh, Georgetown County along with Coastal Carolina University and we're doing a study with our port because our port provides the vitality for the city of Georgetown and also mm -hmm. for the state of South Carolina. And then in essence on top of that, we've identified and we're letting people know that we're, e we're an economic opportunity zone. Of course, you know, the state and the federal government has recognized Georgetown as one. We work closely with the banks for new market tax credits exactly. in which we could identify and, and actually market that to other folks. So when you look at it, you're, you're, in, you're creating an identity for yourself so you can't worry about what's to the north or to the south of you or even to the west. So do, does, does Elkin get what it needs from the State Journal Assembly? Does it get the money? Does it get the resources? <laughs> well, and I know that's probably a loaded question. But I mean, I, I'm coming back to this urban rural divide. Well, do you feel like you are getting what you need from the state? We could, we could always use more. You know, the, sure. uh, in the last, guess the last 10 years, the General Assembly has cut uh, sources of revenue that we had, right. and that's hurt, so we look for other sources. But yeah, I think for the most part, we're getting what we're looking for. Do, do you, Natalie, do you get what I'm trying to do here? And trying to, I, I think what I'm trying to do is identify from a smaller town perspective mm -hmm. what an urban-rural divide as a large city has said. It's very real, we're worried about it. I'm still not understanding why a big city would be worried about it if a smaller town is not worried about it. No, we're not. Um, back to his question, though, on the General Assembly, Hartsville feels like we have to survive on our own, so we're not looking for the state to come and save us. Does the state house? Do you get what you need from the state house in Columbia? No one gets what they need from nope. the state house. <laughs> um, but I feel like every day is a fight for, for survival in a small town, so we're going to be creative and, and you make look it for work grants. for us. You look for a lot of grants. That's right. Economic. So you get good at writing grants yeah. or trying right. to find some uh, rural development, creative. Appalachian. In our case, we can get Appalachian okay. money. Mm -hmm. And really, with the state of South Carolina, home rule, we, when they say home rule, the state really rules. rules. Yeah, I would agree uh, with the that. Cities, <laughs> we, we don't get our fair share, so we have to be creative. Absolutely. We have to be, uh, and, and for instance, in Georgetown, we have a, we have a county airport. And people don't realize that's that's very vital to Georgetown because we have a number of corporate execs along with other um, folks that fly into Georgetown every day. Because of some of the more expensive conclaves on the south end of the Grand Strand? Yes, and also because of the industry that's there. Exactly. Um, it's easier to fly into Georgetown on a private jet or a chartered plane than uh, going through the hassle of flying commercial. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something? Mary? We also have an airport in Person mm -hmm. County that's actually undergoing an expansion for that very same reason. We're finding that, that the corporate 
traffic is more likely to come to Person County, and it's so just a very short drive back into the Research Triangle area. But we've also taken the initiative over the last six years in Roxborough and Person County to get one of the few state certified mega parks established in our community. So we are at the ready for industrial growth mm -hmm. and opportunities in economic development. I mean, that was an, a significant undertaking for our community. But we have worked toward that now. It's taken six years to get that in place. We received our certification just late last year. So Mayor Newell, t t talk about Roxborough and Person County for just a second. You're at the very top of the triangle. Would you be considered triangle or are you on your own as a satellite? Mm -hmm. No, we are part of the Research Triangle Regional Partnership. Okay. So we are definitely one of those, I believe it's 16 counties that in essence work together, but we are on the edge. We are right, the northernmost sure. and perhaps the westernmost in that particular area. So we just, much like uh, Natalie said, we have to find our own paths. We have to be creative, find those opportunities that work for us, and of course engage our state leadership in the General mm -hmm. Assembly to help us out where they possibly can, and they've been and they've been good to us. We've uh, had opportunities. Uh, again, apologies, Mayor Bishop. Mm -hmm. You uh, think of Elk and Yadkin uh, Valley, and in, in, in right before the program, since we're talking about airports and connectivity, you'll drive to Charlotte to use Charlotte Douglas. So, from your point of view, what's important in economic development, as you've kind of heard your contemporaries here talking about it? Uh, Right now, we're, we're, of course, constantly recruiting businesses. And whether it's- And how do you do that? What's your level? We have an economic development department. Right. We have a, a person there. We also work real, very closely with the Surrey Economic Development Partnership, which is a, a private part, a public-private partnership to recruit businesses. And everybody tries to go after the big ones. We know that we have a small industrial park. We're talking about, we've got monies to build a shell building. But they're few and far between, and you're competing not only with everybody else in your county, but the state in the southeast. So we go after the small businesses too, where you can somebody might bring in ten employees, or they might open a, a restaurant, or a B and B, or or a pub, or a, we got a fellow up open an RV park because we're a big wedding venue mm -hmm. where people come in because of the wineries to get married and Uncle Fred doesn't have a place to park his RV. So yeah. <laughs> one of our entrepreneurs says, well, I'll build an RV park real close to downtown along the river. Mm -hmm. So, but, but we also, we have rail and we have the interstate and we have, we have an airport also. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Nat, I think about Hartsville, it's landlocked in the middle of the PD. What is made, what's the special sauce that a, a, a town that has, a small town in Darlington County that's had a large company presence for over a hundred years. What makes it so successful now? What have you done there? Our mayor is fantastic. He has a vision that's a little crazy. Sometimes people think, but it's right. He also is in this fight for survival mode. He has a, the, um, a family owned business there and he wants to see that be successful. So I think for us, it's the vision and putting it on paper because people hear these ideas, but they can't see it. We've had so much local investment. So five local people opened a boutique hotel in our downtown, 17 rooms with a nice restaurant and, and the, the rooftop bar. But if, if you can pitch it to them and they can see it, then they'll believe in it. And it just starts things happening. So that opens and then another mm -hmm. vacant building is used. We've had over 50 new businesses open in our downtown in the past five years. How do you get people to move to Hartsville? I think they're just seeing it. So I think I, I like to say we faked it before we made it. It was a PR <laughs> campaign of all these great things. That'll we're work doing. in city council meetings, won't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> kidding. Hiring a public information <laughs> officer and just making sure we're putting that positive vibe out, and then it started actually really happening and taking off. So if you go around the state right now, people are saying, "What are y'all doing there? What's different?" Mm -hmm. And we've had a city that I admire tremendously. They brought a busload of people to Hartsville to see. How are you doing it? And this is the city that I've always admired. So I think that was just a testament to what's happening. Yes. The people are already in your city. It's just tapping into them because they're there and they're wanting to open those businesses. So one of my best friends, her husband was recruited to be a doctor at the local hospital. What am I gonna do there? Well, she opened this wine and furniture bar. It's this really cool place that people love to go to, but you gotta tap into the people, the Sunoco executives that are coming in their spouse needs employment too. They might be super creative. 
they, they've had this passion and now we're moving to a new town, what can I do? And so I think that's a lot of our success right now. Mayor Barbara may have interrupted you before. Did you have something you wanted to add? Well, when you look at it, you, you have to take action through policy mm -hmm. and what have you. So what we did, we created an economic development incentive package to recruit new business into the community. And then on top of that, we're working privately with a group that's getting ready to uh, build a boutique hotel on the waterfront, which is going to anchor our economic development within the city of Georgetown. We're, we're addressing housing because if you bring businesses in, employees have to have some place to, uh, to live, particularly entry level employees. And then we're also recruiting small businesses. We, we look at Georgetown no, not only as a tourist attraction and also a, a, an industry, um, a place where industry can come and get incentives, but we're also looking at it as, as a tech community. To the south of us, that's a be, the best kept secret probably in the low country, is that um, Mount Pleasant along with Charleston, they have over about probably 140 upstart tech industries. So Georgetown would be the perfect place. But I think when you look at Georgetown and you look at the people, that's what's important because mm -hmm. we're building relationships that we have not built before. Uh, we've just entered into a contract with our local county um, chamber of commerce mm -hmm. so that they can market Georgetown for us along with the other businesses that are in the area. When, when, you, when you're all talking about the growth and you know, the partnership that you have and taking advantage of other partners' resources, I can't help but think uh, two things came up. You just talked about housing, but uh, we also hear about the millennials and how millennials are drawn to different reasons for different, uh, different attributes of millennials. How do you get a young, younger and young people to consider small town life um, versus large town, more contemporary life? Is it purely broadband access or is there something else there? You've got to have the amenities for them. You've got to have like the what, restaurants. Sam, like you've got to have the restaurants. Yes. You've got to have music. You've got to have uh, uh, something for them to a do. A brew pub. Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. And that's one, one thing we've run into is our largest employer is, our, is Hugh Chatham Hospital System. They employ over 800 people. Uh -huh. uh, but you are recruiting a young professional to come in to Elk and to live. And there's really no entry level, not entry level, what I call market rate housing for them. There's subsidized housing for people making less than $40,000 a year. But you get a young professional, he may not or she may not want to make that commitment for a mortgage to buy an upscale mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. because they don't know if this is gonna be their niche in a couple of years. So we really have a lack of that type of housing where they come in as more upscale, it has amenities, whether it has a pool, a clubhouse, tennis courts or whatever. Although we do have a fantastic park system, it's still, that we don't have that type of housing. So we've been working with some of the employers in town, industry and say, look, will you go help us work with a developer We'll give you incentives as much as we can to do this type of housing. What about, what about uh, I almost said Rougemont. What about <laughs> Roxborough? And I know Rougemont's a much smaller town. And, our, and a very kind neighbor of yes, ours. So no, understood, understood. And we appreciate that association. <laughs> no, housing is also a challenge for us because. For you mean affordable reasons, housing? Affordable housing, all, all housing. We have such a broad spectrum. We have two recreational lakes. So obviously the, the retiree that's coming that wants that dream home on the water, they can have that. But we're finding that our inventories at present are at a 15 year low. Our realtors are scrambling to find homes for buyers. Mm -hmm. They have waiting lists of buyers looking for homes. We just annexed about 300 acres just adjacent to our southern city limits for the ultimate construction, hopefully, mm -hmm. of houses, and maybe up to 450, 500 units. We don't know the exact number just yet because that's just happened. But we're finding, yes, there are growth opportunities. Developers are looking at us, but it's the people are waiting. It's like they're waiting to be able to locate in Roxborough because housing prices in Durham and the areas south of us, the urban, are driving, they, them. Are, yeah, driving yeah. are pushing mm -hmm. them out. So, so Natalie, same yeah. thing in Hartsville. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hear about the, the big city problems where a one bedroom starts at $1,100 a month. Right. 
Um, it, it, and, and to hear you all talk about housing, it's approaching the same yeah. type of emergency issue. Do you have a housing issue in the PD? We have a housing issue with the young professionals. So we do have a lot of- But um, they're willing to come. We have a lot of storefronts. We're trying to get them here. So there's always, in the past, I think they were going, they were choosing Florence that had a traditional apartment complex. So we're trying to get them back because once they're over there, we feel like they're going to stay. Uh -huh. That's only about a 30 minute drive. So for us, the city just purchased um, several acres of land adjacent to downtown. It was important to us. It was a, a community and we took down some um, dilapidated homes. And then we've been working with developers on redeveloping that with a traditional apartment complex. So you can walk to downtown. A brewery just announced they're going right next to where we hope to put the apartments. So I think we're, we're looking at that as an issue, but we're taking action on it and we're being creative and bold when doing that. So mm. I think that's what's making the difference right now for us. But mayor, when you're sitting in city council meetings, and this is gonna be for, mm -hmm. th for the mayors, uh, how is, what kind of dialogue is happening now in respect to all of these issues that we talked about, about being competitive, not just with each other, but with other small towns? Do city councils get it? I think they do, um, particularly the new generation, and I say new generation that's that's running for those slots that are on city council. I think they get it, particularly in Georgetown. We realize that we have to build density. Uh, and when I say build density, people that want to live and, and just have fun in Georgetown, not only work, but, but have fun. Mm -hmm. And we provide those opportunities. We're working with a developer now that's going to provide a 125 unit apartment complex within the city on the western end. And that's going to help. But you, you made mention of uh, how do you keep your young people? Well, we're a waterfront town, and that's an amenity that's attractive mm -hmm. to our young people because we have, a board, we have a boardwalk, we have restaurants on the boardwalk. So that young professional that's working every day, mm -hmm. uh, need to relax in the evenings, they can come and enjoy, dine, shop right in Georgetown. But to go back to council, I think it comes down to working with your council, particularly when you have new council members coming on board, you have to really help mentor them and, and work along with them, along with staff. Now the key, as a, the key is as important as anything else. This is your foundation. Your city manager or your city administrator. Mm -hmm. That's your head coach. Yeah. That's right. And that's the person that keeps everything together and keeps the the team moving forward. That's if you do not have a good city administrator or a city manager, you could forget it. You know, I, I, are you, a, and you'll understand the, the question, are you a strong mayor form of government? We're a strong mayor. So the city manager we, is there we, and running in the background. We actually have a city administrator. City administrator, But yes, sir. the understanding is the partnership. Even though I'm a strong mayor, I realize that I'm only as good as that city administrator. So we have a partnership where we work together and say, hey, look, you take care of every operation item or maintenance or what have you, or any ideas that you can help improve us as a city. And that's how we look at it. I don't look at me being the mayor. I look at it as being a part of a, a family, the entire city. Let, let me go to something um, that's related to that. When you think about towns, Columbia, Charleston, Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, uh, Asheville, Wilmington, take, take your pick. Uh, the success of those towns have also been the barrier to growth in as much as when a town gets so big, uh, decision-making, leverage, opinions all become decentralized. All of a sudden, a town like Columbia already has Richland and Lexington counties they have mm -hmm. to deal with, but they have many more constituents, and Charleston's going through this too, and, and they're, they're all going through this, where they've got so many voices at the table with so many good ideas that all of a sudden everything has to be considered, which slows a process about making a decision and moving mm -hmm. in a particular direction. Sam, how do you manage a process? Is it easier to manage a smaller town political leadership structure because of things like that? I think so. I, I, I'm retired from a large city. I moved to Elkin after I retired. And uh, I was in Parks and Recreation uh, in Cary. Mm -hmm. and went through the growth years there. Well, sure, you were in So, the, I mean, yeah. I saw urban, how that grew there and what you had to, and being parks and recreation, you had to compete with water and sewer and everything else to get things done. But in a town such as ours, we're not growing that much. We're, our population is 4,000. It's probably been that for at least 10 years. Uh, and 
the I have a five member board, and I'm the mayor. Mm -hmm. I don't vote except in the case of somebody doesn't show up and I have to break a tie. But I am the face of the city. I'm the one that cuts the ribbons and meets the dignitaries. <laughs> I thought you were going to say cut the grass. I went, wow, that <laughs> no, is a job. Right? <laughs> we do, but we do have a. St we, I do have 50 employees, and a, and a okay. good town manager. But I always tell everybody the greatest resource we've got in government is our personnel. Because if we didn't have the staff, we can't get anything done. Well, um, I, you know what? I, I hate. I'm going to have to uh, draw to a close. But we have run out of time. This has been this has been thoroughly educational. Thank you all for traveling from Elkin, right. from Roxborough, certainly from Hartsville, from Georgetown, South Carolina. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, bless you all, and, th and thanks for being on the program. Okay. Thank you for watching our program. Uh, we hope your weekend is good and you've learned something, as I have on this program. Until next week, I'm Chris William. Good night. Major funding for Carolina Business Review provided by the Duke Endowment, Bearings. Grant Thornton, the South Carolina Ports Authority, Sonoco, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Promotional consideration provided by Business North Carolina Magazine. For more information, visit carolinabusinessreview.com.